Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another DVD update. And this will be a DVD and a book. I did grab one book. But let's get right to it. To the DVD. No Blu-rays. First off, a film that I reviewed recently. Battle Beyond the Stars. The 30th Anniversary Special Edition, which has some good features on there. I liked the film. John Saxon, he was fun as the bad guy. George Papard, Richard Thomas, the lead, had a good innocence to him. Some fun old school special fest for the low budget, headed by James Cameron. A titty ship. Just a few problems, mainly the finale. And I already talked about that in my review. But overall, I liked it. Plus, a great story by James Horner. Yeah, Battle Beyond the Stars. Fun film. Next up, <clears throat> Dirty Work. This is one of two films that Norm MacDonald starred in. The other one he did was, I have it, it's called Screwed, with Norm MacDonald, Dave Chappelle, and Danny DeVito. I have it in the other room. But yeah, Norm MacDonald, Saturday Night Live guy. I believe these are the those are the only two films he starred in. That one, and then the one before that. That one called Screwed, and then this was his first one. Norm MacDonald usually does bit roles in Adam Sandler flicks. I know he was doing KFC commercials as the Colonel, and not anymore. But yeah, Norm MacDonald, Jack Ward, and Chevy Chase, Artie Lane. Don Rickles, Christopher McDonald, who was the bad guy in Happy Gilmore. Adam Sandler has a cameo in this. Chris Farley has a small supporting role. Gary, I think even Gary Coleman has a little cameo as himself. But Dirty Work, fun film for what it needs to be. Actually directed by Bob Saget. Yeah, same guy who was in Full House, which if you watch his stand-up, he's actually a very raunchy comedian. So it made sense that he directed this. But this is a PG-13 film, not rated R. But yeah, directed by Bob Saget. Dirty work. I have fun with this film. And if you're wondering, there's no features. Yeah. This one was curious about it. Wanted to give it a look. I liked Vin Diesel. And that is The Last Witch Hunter. Plus for the Vin Diesel collection, I still need to collect some stuff. Uh, Babylon, I mean, just, I don't know, right now I'm sort of collecting stuff I want to, and then way, way, way down the road, I would like to try to complete my collection as much as possible and try to go back and what I'm missing just for the collection. Like Vin Diesel, I don't have strays. I actually don't have Saving Private Ryan, which he was in. I don't have Babylon AD. But I, I do have Pitch Black, most of the Fast and Furious films, Triple X, which the sequel, I don't know, just sort of rid it was a disappointment. But I do have Find Me Delty because he did a good job in that film. I don't think I have a man apart. I, I think I do have the pacifier. That's a fun one. But anyway, I'm mainly listing all that in case people ask, hey, what do you think of this Vin Diesel movie, this Vin Diesel movie? Like, Strays I haven't seen. Saving Private Ryan I haven't seen in a while, but he has a big role. Knock Around Guys, that's one. I do have that DVD. And it was there. Interesting cast, Seth Green, Vin Diesel... There's another guy who was in Saving Private Ryan. I forget his name. He's the guy who started in Battlefield Earth. I forgot his fucking name already. But, uh... The end of this... It was... So-so, but not too great, unfortunately. And it's sad because I could see elements there. You could tell this was a film they wanted to make into a franchise. Michael Caine, he was good in this... Support, small supporting role. I like the idea about Vin Diesel. He's an 800 year old witch hunter. In the past, he's been cursed to live forever. He's in modern time, modern New York. 
and there's certain decent sequences like when he has a sword made of fire like his sword's on fire but too much CGI it has that look of flips if you compare it to Priest or I Frankenstein with Aaron Eckhart it's not the best look it's like ever since Underworld a lot of films try to copy that word that look of that world that they live in Again, whether it be I Frankenstein or Priest or this film too much CGI to the point it becomes CGI porn not really exciting action sequences set pieces which I do see why this film flopped it's not that good of a movie I'll keep it for the Vin Diesel collection but the trailer didn't look great, but I'm like, you know, I like Vin Diesel. I do like the guy, and he seems like a really nice guy, but... I don't know the features, he talks about how he wanted to do this film because he's a fan of Dungeons and & Dragons, and he wanted to do a fantasy movie, but... Breck Eisner is not the right director. I think he did the remake of The Crazies. I did not mind that film, but... He's still not the right guy to do this, and it's just... There's elements of this remind me of Constantine, and I like Constantine with Keanu Reeves a lot more than this. So The Last Witch Hunter, and it's PG-13, didn't help. But yeah, the action scenes wasn't much. The action scenes were not much, very little bits, and they were pretty lame. So it's just, yeah, disappointing flick. For the Clint Eastwood collection, Honky Tonk Man, Pink Cadillac, and City Heat. I used to have City Heat, but then I got rid of it a year or two ago but I mean, I was pissed because you know I, I want to collect more Clint Eastwood films because I don't know when the guy will he's pretty up there in age and again I want to collect as much as possible with him and there's quite a few I don't have like I don't have the Eider Sanction I don't have Tightrope but I've been lucky I got High Plains Drifter on Blu-ray that was a really nice gift I have quite a few of his films. The Dirty Harry box set, the Space Cowboys. I, I do have quite a few of his movies, so I'm get I'm getting there. And hey, three films that I didn't have in one collection, and this was pretty cheap. Mainly I waited for this website Goasis, which I rarely use anymore, but they were having a 50% off. And these are like 50% on movies that were three dollars originally, so I could not pass it up. So that's why I got quite a few of these flicks because of that. But yeah, Honky Tom Man, Pink Cadillac, and City Heat. That's the thing. When I collect, I wait for it as cheap as possible. Then I try, oh, I want to do that for the collection. But yeah. Pink Cadillac is directed by the same guy who did The Deadpool. And actually, I think he did In Which Way You Can. I believe he did. And it's like the Clint Eastwood film no one remembers. Honky Tom Man, he directed sort of a pet project. And yeah, City Heat. This point film with Clint Eastwood and Burt Reynolds because it's the two of them together. That's where Burt Reynolds got smashed. He got smacked in the face with a chair on like his first day. And then he had like a broken jaw. And then something happened where it got infected. Some type of thing happened. He was losing weight. And then the newspaper's like, oh, he's got AIDS. No, he's losing weight because of this thing going on with his jaw. And then later on, that he got sort of addicted to drugs, painkillers because of that. So, pretty sad. And it's not even that great of a movie. It's kind of like Harlem Nights, where it's a period piece. You get two big people, like Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood. Or even Jackie Chan Jelly in The Forbidden Kingdom. That's a period piece. Different continent, but still a period piece. It's like, don't put them in period pieces. There's a history of that. God damn it. So, then we have films that I enjoyed when I was a kid, still enjoyed to this day. They Call Me Trinity. This is the movie where if you watch the Jamie Foxx flick Jango Unchained, Unchained. Is that what it was called? Ch Jango. God, I can't fucking talk today. The Quentin Tarantino film Jango. There's a song at the end. Do, 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 do. It's from this movie, They Call Me Trinity, where these two guys, Terrence... 
Hill and Bud Spencer worked together. They're Italian films. I always thought this was the best one. But they do also have Trinity is Still My Name, the sequel. And then they worked together on a couple other films. So there's this pack. It has nothing to do with Trinity, so I don't know why it has that title. But it's four films. Watch Out, We're Mad, Two Missionaries, Soldier of Fortune, and Aladdin. So, there you go. I don't know how many movies they did together. And then we got some superhero films. Ant-Man. Really enjoyed this flick. Wanted to get this in my collection, and now I do, thankfully. Guardians of the Galaxy. Another film I really enjoyed. Wanted to get this in my collection. And I'm fine with the DVD. The DVDs were cheaper, and they were 50% off, so I'm like, I got it. I did it quick. Ant, again, Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, two Marvel films that I do enjoy. I'm sorry. If that makes me a Marvel fanboy, then fuck it. I like the film. <laughs> it's fun. They're fun. Um, unfortunately, the the case got busted, but the disc is fine, and that is a flit that I wanted to give another watch. The Black Hole, a Disney film with Robert Forster, Anthony Perkins, and Ernest Borgnine. I'm like, man, I forgot about that cast. And it was a big special effects movie from Disney. Try to get on the Star Wars train. It didn't really do well at the box office, from what I understand. But yeah, I wanted to give this film another look. I haven't seen this film in forever. And there's through the black hole featurette, so I don't know if that's a feature from back in the day or what it is, but then for the George Romero Romero collection, Two Evil Eyes. This pretty much finishes up my George Romero collection, because the only ones I don't have are like his really, really early flicks. But I think he did like a skin flick porn type of flick. I could be wrong on that. And then there's one called Season of the Witch. So his like very very early ones. Night of Living Dead I do have because it came with a book because it was you could really Night of Living Dead is public domain. And I have Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Uh, I did pick up for cheap a lot ago like Survival of the Dead and I got Land of the Dead, Bruiser, Muddy Shines and Dark Half on Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I do have Night Riders. I do have. Someone has sent me Martin from overseas. I have that disc. So yeah, this is pretty much the end of my George Romero collection. Two Evil Eyes, which he did with Dario Argento. It's a two disc and has a bonus disc, disc with features. This from Blue Underground. And found this very cheap, thankfully, because it's a limited edition DVD. Got this for like two, three bucks. The Gunman. Sean Penn film that I liked. It's not fantastic. It's not as good as the director's previous films, which were taken from Paris with Love. I think those are much better than this. But I liked it. I definitely prefer this over Taking Two or Taking Three or Columbiana or the shit that Olivier Megaton did. Again, Pierre Morel, who did Taking from Paris with Love, it's his weakest film of the three flips he's directed. But I still like it. I like Sean Penn. I like Idris Elba. The cast worked well. Ray Winstone. When I had good enough pace, and still a pretty decent flick. I don't think it was that bad, like people made it out to be. That's just my opinion. And then Battle Creek Brawl, a.k.a. The Big Brawl, Jackie Chan film I did not have in my collection, which I'll never finish my Jackie Chan collection because he's made so many fucking films. So many fucking movies. It's just... But wanted to get this because it was his... His first American film that he starred in. I mean, he was in stuff like Cannibal Run, Cannibal Run 2. But to actually star, this is the first. With Robert Klaus, the guy who directed Enter the Dragon. But yeah, it's called Battle Creek Brawl. But if you go online, it's also called The Big Brawl. But this came out in 1980. So this will be coming up sometime in my journey into the 1980s. And probably be the next film I review is Battle Creek Brawl. But uh, just been a bit busy at the moment doing some stuff. So 
But yeah, the next review you'll see will be this one. My journey to the year 1980. And then, last but not least, is a book which I was able to find. Well, not find, I got it online. But it's a film I definitely enjoy. A film. I'm always talking about films, so I rarely talk about books. But I got the Nightmare USA book. The Untold Story of Exploitation Independence. Been told this is a fantastic book. So, and I haven't had a chance to read this, but even flipping through it, it's very well done. You can tell. Mostly black and white pictures, but there are some color pictures, and it tells about a lot of exploitation films from, I want to say 1970 to 1985. Like, for example, there's a chapter on The Daily Spawn, which was a film that was sent to me that I enjoyed. Or a film that I haven't seen but I've heard about. I know my friend Mike told another friend, Effrey. Effrey, don't watch this movie. <laughs> and that is on Don't Go in the House. And you have even stuff on Microwave Massacre. not just reviews but the, about the making of a lot of these films and I don't want to show too much because some of these are well they have nudity in them but another independent film Slithis so so talk on the making of the film which is interesting because these films at least most of them are not going to get big DVD releases with special features so it's interesting to hear about the making of some of these independent flicks. He even goes into Deathbed, The Bed That Eats. Which is, and this is a pretty thick book. I mean, it's over 500 pages. And then a good chunk of Section 3 are just reviews that he does for various movies, various films. I'll be honest, I thought there is a, there's a movie that I like, which is an exploitation film called The Bean, which I thought was going to be in here, but because I read a review, and it's like, yeah, they talk about the bean, and they don't talk about the movie in this, so I don't know what the hell that reviewer was talking about. Um, it wasn't my friend Michael CP, because he has his book, and he told me good things about it, but I don't think he's read it. But I was, like, reading a review online. So, yeah, the bean. Like, you know, talk about the bean. What are you talking about? And I wanted to hear some info on that, because I like that movie. But, yeah, it's... You know, I don't want to. Yeah, some of these pictures do have duty to them, and I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah, a good chunk of the third part of the book are reviews, and it's plenty of flicks. For example, did you know that there was a movie called Friday the 13th The Orphan? Of course, that ch title was changed. Or the film that I don't know, Cinema Snob went ape shit over, Night of Horror. And I don't know, the fact that it's these really low budget flits, they don't, I mean, really interesting stories. And there's also just a nice book to look at, because there's a lot of, like, there is color. Yeah, I don't, make sure I show you one that doesn't have nudity in it. Like, for example, this one on uh, the Daily Spawn. And... Let 
and then Legend of Body Tree gets mentioned. So yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff in this. And I figured, you know what? You only live once. I've been really curious about this book. I've heard so many good things that if you like horror films or you like that kind of movie, that this is one to at least be, if you're intrigued by, give it a look. They even talk about that one movie, The Forest. I think they actually do talk about Don't Go in the Woods. Like, hey, don't go in the woods alone. Which, that's a funny one. But, uh, yeah. I can't, sh yeah, I can't show all the pictures. Because I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, Nightmare USA. Glad to have this book. Be a definite interesting read. Well worth my collection. I did get rid of those horror films of the 80s, 90s, and 70s. I sent them to my friend Mike OCP. Because, I don't know, I was just disappointed in those. But this one, I mean, just to visual-wise alone, just to look at, let alone a lot of just weird little films that will be interesting to hear info on. Just sometimes the the making of the film is more interesting than the film itself. If you don't believe me, watch the making of Heaven's Gate. It's a hell of a lot more interesting than the movie Heaven's Gate. Like, how did a director like Michael Cimino lose his fucking mind? Oh yeah, here's Don't Go in the Woods. They talk about that. James Bryan. So, yeah. And... Right. I mean, some little disappointments don't have the being. Uh, I was surprised Rituals with Hal Holbrook, but I guess maybe he doesn't consider that an exploitation film. But I'm like, no Rituals with Hal Holbrook? You don't talk about that one? Why? But, uh, I mean, this is like little teeny tiny nitpicks. But again, there's a lot of stuff in this. A lot of stuff. And again, just as a visual, a lot of posters and covers, again, some graphic that I don't want to get into trouble. And yeah, I, again, it's a lot of black and white, but still, really nice to look at, just to look through, let alone when I really get into reading, because I really just want to sit down and read all the way through. But yeah, what I definitely needed to get my collection, so. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.